Well, hi, Melanie. This is uh, Melanie Wilson, and I would like to introduce you, uh, those of you who are listening, to uh, my current guest today. This is Pat Fenner for Breakthrough Homeschooling, supporting moms who are homeschooling through high school and beyond. And uh, Dr. Melanie Wilson is, uh, has been around for a long time. I've met her at, uh, at a conference once, which was, which was really a pleasure. And she's a well-respected voice in, in homeschooling, uh, blogger, plot, podcaster, and, and homeschools herself. So I'm, that's a little a brief introduction. Melanie, maybe you could give us a little more, fill that in a little bit for our uh, viewers. Yeah, so my background is in clinical psychology. I worked in a Christian practice and fully expected that I was going to be a part-time psychologist and a part-time mom, mm -hmm. and that didn't work out. <laughs> I, had, I had a baby who had constant ear infections, mm -hmm. and I was constantly canceling my client appointments, and I just thought, you know what, this just isn't worth it, and I switched to just counseling a couple evenings a week. And then when I had my second child, I just was like, that's, I can't do it. And it, it was a hard, it was a hard decision. Mm -hmm. But um, what was even a tougher decision was to make that a permanent thing. Mm -hmm. When God called me to homeschool uh, my kids, I was like, how can I do that? And yeah. <laughs> because I really, I really believed that the Lord was calling me to be a writer and a speaker. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see how I could do that and homeschool too. But now here I am. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you yeah. know, God had had to be laughing at that. So um, that's that's my background. Now what I do is I have a podcast called The Homeschool Sanity Show. I have a blog called Psycho with Six because I now have six children. Right. And I also write curriculum, elementary language arts curriculum called Grammar Galaxy that I just truly enjoy creating it and sharing it with other homeschoolers. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great, it's been a great boost to uh, homeschool curriculum resources that back in the day when, when I got started, we just used public school curriculum and kind of tailored it, you know, and did what we could, but there's so right. No, that was a good, good contribution. So I want to, I guess I want to speak to you because you are a doctor, uh, a psychologist. Uh, one of the articles, of course, we're here today, this is part of our series of uh, dealing with Harvard. Uh, and we are, one of the comments in the article was uh, the psychological damage, you know, that, or abuse. <laughs> I believe that homeschooling, yeah. I know we've, I know we've been around the block before and we've heard this before. Mm -hmm. The reason I want to talk to you about this today really is the timing of it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we both know what, as we're recording this, we're in the middle of the, you know, self uh, isolating and all that stuff, the coronavirus. And many families find themselves educating at home, not necessarily homeschooling. There is a difference. But, uh, mm -hmm. and so I just think the timing of this is just uh, not great mm -hmm. uh, and could potentially, you know, we just need to be vigilant about our freedoms as homeschoolers. So, anyway, we, you know, we've talked about this. We have nothing in our heart besides the best for our kids. And, and the homeschoolers that we know and associate with feel the same way. But perhaps you could talk to that aspect of her belief that it's psychologically damaging, that it's abusive, uh, isolating our kids at home and such. Okay. So that was the very first thing that attracted me to homeschooling. The Lord put the idea of homeschooling in my heart. I didn't want to do it, but I saw a book on homeschooling at a Christian bookstore when I was there. So that, that dates me. Uh, <laughs> I was yeah. in a Christian bookstore. <laughs> it's, it's hard to find these days, I know. but I, I saw this book on homeschooling and I thought, okay, I'll pick it up and read it. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to, I'll read it. <laughs> and what I was most impressed by was the fact that homeschooled children have the highest levels of self-esteem of any other group of children, whether that's public schooled or parochial schooled. Mm. And that impressed me because having been a victim of bullying myself mm. in school, I knew that I still carried the scars from that, mm, um, right. you know, challenges to my self image and, and, to be completely honest, I think I still carry it. I still am afraid to be too bold or to mm. say what I really 
think because I know <laughs> what the blowback right. is going to be, right? Right. Um, and so I thought, wow, if I have an opportunity to protect my children's mm-hmm. self-image, um, why wouldn't I take that? Mm-hmm. Because that, I mean, talk about a, a success factor. If you yeah. have good self-esteem, what what can't you do in That's life, right? right? That's right. And so the fact is I have now, I'm almost to the point of having four high school graduates. My um, my son is a high school senior right now Yay. as we speak. So I will almost have four high school graduates. And I think the most telling example of the power of self-esteem in homeschooling is that mm-hmm. my oldest son was homeschooled all the way through until he asked me to go to high school as a junior, our public high school. We have an excellent high school mm-hmm. in our district. And uh, my husband and I both felt that this was what was best for him. And I still think that it was what was best for him, but uh-huh. I'm going to tell you that the challenges to mm. his self-esteem were intense. Mm. Very, very intense. Um, he is a very extroverted young man, and it's the main reason he wanted to go to high school in the first place. Right. Um, but the 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 things that were said and done to him were extraordinary. I mean, they were really out of bounds, even though there were some wonderful kids and he had some excellent right. experiences. Right. There were uh, a small group of kids who were abusive. You know what? You want to talk about abuse? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he experienced serious. abuse. He experienced, it was true abuse in the high school and he handled it so well. Why? Because he knew that he was an okay person. There was nothing wrong with him. And in fact, there was something wrong with these kids who were behaving in these really abnormal ways. Um, And so, you know, I'm just so, I'm so pleased that he was able to handle that um, kind of pressure and Mm -hmm. truly abuse in the school setting because he had that grounded self-esteem. And I think Mm -hmm. that's what so many people outside of homeschooling don't really understand that we do not have to push our kids into social situations, whether it's in daycare, preschool, uh, or regular school, yeah. um, to teach them how to deal with abuse and bullying at, at that age. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't have to have it at that age. And in fact, if we give them that grounding in, in self-esteem um, and, you know, a uh, a more, I'm not going to say a protected environment Mm -hmm. so much as a curated environment. Mm -hmm. So this is what, this is what I mean. So my kids went to, were involved in all kinds of social activities. We did homeschool PE classes. That was one of the best things that we did for our kids to teach them how to deal with other kids and difficult relationships um, and to be a hundred percent honest, sometimes my kids were the bullies in mm-hmm. that situation. And so, man, so much learning took place. Yeah. But here, here's the difference between a homeschool activity and a public school activity. We dealt with it as parents. When there were problems between our kids, we would say, Hey, your kid is doing this. That's not okay. And then the parent would say, you're right. I'm going to handle it, right. um, whether, whether it was something being done to my child or my child doing something to someone else. Right. I mean, that's how it's supposed to be. Not this, you know. Well, you, know, you might not ever, ever have found, it, found out correct. it happened at the school. Right. That's and, right. And, you know, that's one thing that's coming up now, too, that uh, I'm getting parents shoot me emails about, you know, my kids are misbehaving. They're arguing. They're fighting. They don't know. They, they can't, you know, focus or, or motivate themselves. And, you know, why are they so different now? And, and, and my response is always, you know, what you see going on at home is often going on at school, right. but you don't see it and so you can't deal with it. And it's just either pushed under the rug or the teacher mm-hmm. comes in and, hey, break it up. And it's not, it's not dealt with. Right. And yeah, so it's not that it doesn't happen when they're in school. It's that oh, like yes. said, we're able to see it because well, oftentimes we're right there, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and I guess where that, 
where her comment comes from is is the uh, sometimes the the cases where there is actual abuse that is caught mm -hmm. in the schools mm -hmm. and parents respond by, oh, well, I'll just bring them home then. I don't need this kind of thing. Yes. Um, but your take on that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you brought that up. You know, when the news broke about the Turpin case in California where right. this very large family of children and they weren't just children as we know, they right. were also adults um, who were being held captive and tortured um, and abused in horrific, horrific yeah. ways. Yeah. I spent some time going through the non-homeschooling mm -hmm. arguments. Uh, I mean, people who were not homeschooling, their arguments about what needs to change right. with respect to homeschooling. And I really wanted to take their arguments seriously because mm -hmm. this, this is a tragedy that, oh that this could happen. Absolutely. Um, and of course, I don't ever want that to happen to another child if there's anything that we can do about it. Amen. And so one of the, um, one of the arguments that was made is that parents who have abuse charges, accusations, whatever, leveled at them, and their, their children are in the public schools, mm -hmm. that those parents should not be allowed to withdraw their children and homeschool them without being investigated, cleared mm -hmm. of those allegations. Right. And I say, you know, regardless of what any of my homeschooling colleagues might think about that, uh -huh. I say that, yes, that is exactly what should be done. And I say that even knowing that there may be innocent parents who are, you know, at cross purposes with a teacher, they're in some kind right. of a conflict with a teacher and the teacher makes an allegation that's unfounded. And I realize that I am saying that you might have to deal with a real burden in proving yourself innocent of right. any abuse or neglect in order to claim your legal right to homeschool. And right. I understand that and I am sorry for that, but I do think that that inconvenience and struggle Mm -hmm. is worth the possibility that we can prevent abusive parents from protecting their abuse of their children right. under the guise of homeschooling when they're not homeschoolers at all. Right. And, and in fact, their actions have nothing whatsoever to do with homeschooling. I want to make a clean break between those people mm -hmm. and people who, who are truly homeschooling because they feel it's best for their child or they've been homeschooling from the beginning. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. That's not, that's not homeschooling using it right. as, as a cloak. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, right. Definitely. Definitely. Well, the last question, um, and I totally agree with you, by the way, I mean, I, it, I know it would be difficult and it would probably be a hardship for the family to have to do that. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is we want to do best for the kids. And, and yes, you know, that's it. Sometimes you have to go through garbage, you know, to get to what you, mm -hmm. the good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, last question I get, think I want to talk to you about was she also talks about uh, the, uh, the, the, what her, what she's saying is typical that very often homeschool parents are not educated and cannot read and write themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I think is kind of interesting because most of us, at least in my experience, and I've been doing this 23 years, my experience has been most of us are products of, of course, traditional schooling. Very few, of course, I think now it's going to be more and more, you know, parents have been homeschooled. But back in the day, <clears throat> we were products of traditional public school education. So, so to say that we can't read and write is kind of an indictment on the system. But anyway, it is. Yes. But you've met a lot be between your reading and speaking and, and writing and everything. Uh, you've mm -hmm. met a lot of homeschool moms, mm -hmm. talked to a lot of people. How, how would you, what would you say to that comment that most, many of us can't read or write? Well, first of all, I would invite her to look at the data because mm -hmm. um, I have been surprised by the, um, the number of highly educated people who are homeschooling and the proportion mm -hmm. of those. I, I, I wish I could say that I know for sure what the percentages are, right. but I can absolutely say that it's, it's not a clear majority of people mm -hmm. who are homeschooling, who have like 
uh, you know, the equivalent of an eighth grade education. That's just right. not true. Right. <laughs> it's just right. not true. And in fact, so many people have at least some college mm -hmm. who are um, home educating. But regardless of that, um, you know, I have a lot of people who don't homeschool who ask me about it and they say, well, that's great for you because you have a PhD. So that's, you know, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> right. That's okay. And I really dislike that yeah. uh, when I get that response because I have homeschooled with, in my home-based co-op mm -hmm. over the years, people who have a high school education mm -hmm. and not just a high school education, but a high school education in which they received average grades mm -hmm. and so you know you know the person who's not knowledgeable about homeschooling could say what mm -hmm. you know that that can't be the case but you know to to kind of go on the defensive a little bit uh, before I before I give you my rationale for why that is absolutely acceptable mm -hmm. I invite you to look at the college entrance scores for uh -huh. people who plan to go into education. And you will find that they are some of the lowest scores of any other intended profession. Wow. So what does that tell you oh my <laughs> about our educators? <laughs> and yeah. you know, I, have, I love teachers. I have friends who are teachers and I think Absolutely. they're wonderful and smart. I am not trying to say that they're not smart, right. but I am trying to say that if you were just going to look at a metric, like, you know, like test scores or grades or something right. like that. To, um, to make a comparison. You got, yeah, you're not, you're not going to be encouraged right. <laughs> when, you, when you look at our, <laughs> at our educators' backgrounds, or right. their educational background. Okay, so let's put that aside. And, and I want to explain that home educating to me is like being a general contractor for your child's education. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just like, you know, um, putting an addition on your house and, and you get like, we did that and we had to have a brick on the exterior. So we had to get a bricklayer. We had to get an electrician. We had to hire an architect. We had to work with so many different people. Right. And yes, there were some things that my husband and I could do, um, that we were able to do. Mm -hmm. But when you are a home educator, you know what your limitations are. Mm -hmm. And thank God we have so many oh my amazing gosh. materials written by brilliant people that quite frankly, most teachers don't have access to. Right. They're, they're told what to use Absolutely. for curriculum. Absolutely. Um, and, and so we as homeschoolers, I have used curriculum as a, a homeschooler where I am told literally word for word what to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I had them too. And now, you know, if you literally can't read, I mean, I think that's, I think that's a straw man. I mean, I do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, mean, I really don't think that that's going on in droves where we have these parents who are teaching at home and they can't read. No, right. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, but even then, if, if a parent like that had a true heart to give her children the best education that yeah. she could, she could use audiobooks. She oh. could she could employ online teachers, um, video courses, computer courses. There are so many co-op co I mean, co co classes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's really, homeschooling is really a, a DIY education where we are allowed to pull in the best curriculum for our child, the best approaches, the best teachers. I have my kids in classes right now with Mr. D of Mr. D. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. And he is amazing. He is an amazing teacher and his, yep. he has the most cheerful attitude. Yes. <laughs> it's like every time I hear him on my kid's computer, I'm like, wow, he's still in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, and here's, here's the last thing. So these parents, I have told you about who I have homeschooled with, right. who have an average high school education, their kids have gone on to college and gotten yeah. A's in their college courses and have been successful in their chosen careers. And see, that's, that's what tells you that it's not, it's not the grades, right. it's, not, it's not the um, 
you know, the accolades that you get academically. It's really your heart and your passion. Yeah. And um, I will tell you one more um, story about that, that I can tell you as a psychologist, when I was um, doing my student practicing Mm -hmm. in graduate school, I had a client who had an IQ that was on the verge of being developmentally disabled. Like he shouldn't have been able to really function academically. It was that low. Wow. This young man worked so hard, Mm. so hard in his coursework. I mean, studied like crazy. And he was getting average grades in college. Wow. College. And so that showed me that it's, it's more about your heart Mm -hmm. and your ambition to teach your kids because we all know teachers who phone it in. Oh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, you know? So if you, if you want to talk about like substandard teaching, we can find many, many examples in public schools. So yes, it's going to vary. It's going to vary. I don't want anyone telling me that I don't have what it takes right. simply because I wasn't educated in how to be a teacher. I have years of experience in teaching, even though I haven't been to college for it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think sometimes, you know, teachers who become homeschoolers, it doesn't work for you because most of the courses that teachers take anyway are classroom management, things that you don't need to deal with even as, as, a, right. as a homeschooler. Yeah. That's right. Right. Yeah. The, um, I mean, I guess what disturbed me about that article is we can find exceptions to any, you know, in any, both homeschooling and traditional schooling. When you look at the system as a whole, though, it's the, the traditional public school system is there's a lot more broken in it and it's a lot more difficult to fix. Yes. You know, we, we can approach things for our kids during their education years, their years in mm-hmm. school, that school systems will take possibly generations, I mean, seriously, to fix some of these things. That's right. If they, if they even can be fixed, some of them are systemic, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's really interesting. I mean, I, I think I was reading to a few, this was a, not a current statistic, it was a few years back, but the uh, NHERI, the National Home Educating Research, <clears throat> had done a study on uh, uh, parents, uh, what parents' degrees, you know, what their training was and then where their kids went, their home educated kids went. And I think it was 50 to, I don't remember if it was 50 or 75, but it was either way as a large percentage of children who were educated by parents who only had an eighth grade education went mm-hmm. on to college. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, right. I mean, right there, that yes. says just because you only have an eighth grade. And I know that affects a lot of homeschool mom self-esteem, you right. know, the fact the ones who only have eighth grade, but look, their Absolutely. kids will still do great, you know? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And, well, I, you know, just, just one last thing, you know, sure. the, the notion is that homeschooling needs to have so many more controls. And, right. you know, if your kids aren't cutting the mustard on these standardized tests that we give you, then they shouldn't be allowed to be homeschooled anymore. And I would like <laughs> to turn that around on Absolutely. the public schools and say, okay, so when you have a student who isn't making the grades when you do your standardized testing, then that student should have to be homeschooled then. Right. Yeah, there <laughs> you go. In fact, if that student was homeschooled by a caring, loving parent, the, the chances that that student would make progress are so much greater. And I'm not saying that every parent has that capability. Right. But, but it's like, talk about a double standard. Absolutely. I, I, we need to start holding our public schools to a higher standard. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and stop, stop keeping the, our feet to the fire. Mm-hmm. You know, and it meant always being defensive. It just takes a lot of useless energy to, you know, to defend homeschooling. And it's not necessary when you look at the statistics, like you said. No, you know, it's it, not. Yeah. So, well, listen, thank you so much for this. I love this conversation. Uh, I, I, it's good to hear from somebody who's clearly done the research and stuff as well, because it's just uh, a lot of, a lot of stuff to take. And I just hope that you, if you, those of you who've been listening to this this morning uh, or today, that you are encouraged by this and just don't, um, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I know many of you are listening or watching this right now during uh, the COVID crisis and you are, have your kids at home and you may be stressed about 
you know, are they learning? They're not learning. How do I help them? And things like that. And I just hope that you're encouraged to use a parent. Nobody is going to know or love your kids more than you will. And while I think Melanie would agree with me that homeschooling is not for everybody, uh, you may be surprised. There's a lot of homeschoolers that we, we started out kind of hesitant and I don't know if I want to do this. And Melanie herself shared her story and that was her case too. So it can, it can be done. It can be done well. So thank you again, Melanie. I'm going to have links underneath this video for some of the stuff she was talking about. Certainly Melanie's podcast and the article that she did about the Turpin case and uh, other interesting tidbits for you. So, all right. Thanks again for watching and thank you, Melanie. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>